Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this Monday edition of Theological Comfort Food. Uh, this is a ministry of the Cordon Baptist Church, and we exist to be a Christian family of disciple-making disciples who are consumed by the glory of God and the gospel of Christ. And I hope and pray that as you have pressed now through a weekend, uh, first weekend really of um, some quarantining, and I know of some of our members some people that um, are at least connected with us that have lost jobs, had their hours reduced. And so I want to just continue to encourage you, church, uh, as best I can by the grace of God. And I want to do it today with uh, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. Proverbs 21, verse 1 says, The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. God is so sovereign that he actually shapes and directs the decisions of world leaders. And that's not a very popular doctrine, I suppose, among many denominations in Christendom, and yet the Bible is very clear that it's true. The 1689 Baptist Confession states, God hath decreed in himself from all eternity by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will, freely and unchangeably, all things whatsoever comes to pass. Yet so as thereby is God neither the author of sin, nor hath fellowship with any therein. The prophet Isaiah said this, or God said this through Isaiah, I declare the end from the beginning. That's Isaiah 46.10. God says that He raised up the ruler Cyrus of Persia to enact judgment upon Israel. And then God turns around and holds Cyrus and Persia accountable for their sins and the evils that they committed. And that is repeated in the Bible over and over. Mary proclaimed in her Magnificat that God has brought down the mighty from their thrones. Romans 13 says that there is no governing authority except from God. So here's my point to you today. God not only ordains leaders of nations, he actually ensures their decisions accomplish his ultimate will and purpose. Leaders are still very accountable for their sins, but what people And what Satan mean for evil, God can and he does turn for good. Brothers and sisters, we need not wonder what his ultimate purpose is. Church, we don't have to wonder where this is all headed. Should we pray for our president and our Congress and our governors and our mayors and our city councils if God is so sovereign? Absolutely, yes, a thousand times yes. God's sovereignty actually makes me more fervent and more powerful, I would say, in my praying, knowing that God will work out His will and His purpose on this earth. And so, yes, we should pray now more than ever. And we're crying out to God, I pray, I hope we are, to give our president and our Congress and our leaders, local and federal, wisdom to make really hard decisions during this worldwide crisis. But we do so, church, knowing that whatever decisions they make, good or evil, God's ultimate purpose will be accomplished. He is still turning the hearts of kings. As Benjamin Franklin said, our most pagan founding father perhaps, was so pagan that he said this, God governs in the affairs of men. I wonder how many of our leaders will be brought to admit that that is true. A doctor in Italy this morning on the news in one of the most advanced hospitals in the world looked with desperation into the camera and said, we are not enough. Please pray for us. Will our leaders say that? I hope so. I hope so. I hope many, if not all of them, will say that in the days and weeks ahead. But whatever decisions they make, church, either good or evil, God will accomplish His purpose. I don't know how, and neither do you. As the hymn says, God moves in a mysterious way His wonders to perform. But move He does. And God is moving this world 
to its rightful ordained end. All kings, all leaders, all nations, all peoples, all popes, all presidents, all pastors will be directed to their rightful end. Behold, he is coming on the clouds and every eye shall see him and they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. So I encourage you as you begin a new week to take time, church, to mourn. Wail on account of your own sins first. And the cost, the great cost to redeem you from those sins that the Lord Jesus paid. Mourn for the sins of our community. Mourn for the sins of our nation. And mourn the sins of our own church and our church is. Turn off the TV for a day or two. And shut out the pandemic noise. And fast. And pray. And mourn. And wail. But do not despair. Do not despair. Behold, he's coming on the clouds. And every eye will see him. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.